Hi guys, it's Harmony from Messengers of Mercy. And today we're going to talk about signs that we're in the last days. So when you start to think of the last days, a lot of times your mind starts to think about prophecy. And one of the best books when it comes to prophecy is the book of Revelation. Specifically chapters two and three, where you find the letters. Those are some of the most prophetic books or prophetic chapters in the book of Revelation in the entire Bible. The letters are obviously literal. These were historical locations. These were historical cities, but they also carry universal truths, truths that we can apply to our lives no matter where we are in history. But the last part about the letters is their prophetic nature. And this is where I would like to look at today. Specifically, the last letter, which is written to Laodicea. So let's look at that. Revelation 3, 14 to 22. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, the amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God says this, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out from my mouth. Because you say I am rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing, and you do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I advise you to buy from me gold refined by fire so that you may become rich in white garments, so that you may clothe yourself, and that the shame of your nakedness will not be revealed. And I saw salve to anoint your eyes, so that you may see. Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline, therefore be zealous and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and will dine with him and he with me. He who overcomes, I will grant to him to sit down with me on my throne, as I also overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. What is so prophetic about this final letter, this letter written to Laodicea, is if you actually look at all of the letters, the letters to Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamum, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and finally Laodicea, they all correlate with the different times of the church history. Ephesus is often thought to be that of the apostolic church, which would be like from 30 to 100 AD. And Laodicea comes after the Philadelphia section, which would be the, um, I guess when you would say the outreach or like the missionary church, that would be um, what you find here in Laodicea. So that takes place in 1900 to question mark, which means in a prophetic sense, we are in the final letter. We are in the final stage. We are in the last of the last days. I guess you could call it the later days. Um, But what's interesting about this is when you read in Laodicea, you see these things that are popping out. The first thing it talks about is lukewarm Christianity. It talks about how you are neither hot nor cold. This would be one of the first signs that we are in the final or last days people tend to be wishy-washy in their faith, Um, perhaps go to church on Sunday, but really they're not, they don't have a fire for the Lord. And that's what this is. Or perhaps it's that dead Christianity. It's that Christian that goes to small group who goes to church, but doesn't have a functioning relationship with the Lord. They appear to be hot, so to speak, but really inside they're just tepid at best. And 
the Lord is saying, I'd rather you be hot or cold. And, and, and for someone to be cold is actually for them not to know the Lord. But he would rather that than to you be in this, this place of not really knowing him, but thinking you know him, which is so common nowadays. The second sign he discusses here, he talks about wealth. You know, because you say, I am rich and I have become wealthy. This here is an echo to comfort and how it comfort can be an exact juxtaposition to faith. In James, it talks about how each one, every time that you have a trial in life, how it's a blessing. And right here, this is what it's talking about. It's talking about how there has been such a insane reduction um, of just struggle. There's no, there's no more hardship. Um, people can get food by just driving to the grocery store. They're inundated with options. I mean, my goodness, if you've been to Wegmans recently, uh, there's got to be like, <laughs> like 35 different types of boxed, you know, salads that you can make, pick from, if not more. And we have become such a a wealthy world, so to speak. The the status of our wealth is is better and bigger than it's ever been before. But that third and and final point is they don't they're not zealous. He says, "Those who I love, I reprove and discipline. Therefore, be zealous and repent." He's calling his followers to repent of their sins. He's calling the people that he loves, which is each and every one of us as believers, because he is here. This is the end. He's at the door. He's right there. And it's it's actually, it's interesting. I When I see this, I'm standing at the door and knock. It reminds me actually of a passage in Genesis where it talks about when Cain is about to murder Abel and it's before he makes that decision and it talks about how sin is crouching at his door but in this case you know Cain opens that door and lets sin in in this case it's a parallel but it's it's, it's an opposite it's the Lord it's our savior outside of the door and all we have to do is let him in if we hear his voice and we welcome him and we have that union, that community with him and we become one with him, that is when we discard our lukewarm Christianity and instead we become hot with a fire, that burning light of Christ. And when you have that fire inside of you, you can be a beacon for people because when you have a fire for the Lord, you can't hide Jesus Christ when he's inside of you. You can't just mask him because Jesus is so powerful. He will ooze out from you. His light will shine. His love will shine. And when you truly repent and you see that the world's riches are not the true riches. The real riches are the riches that you earn by living a righteous life and the rewards that you get in heaven. Now, I'm not saying that you have to work to get to heaven, but will there be different types of reward when we get to heaven based on the righteousness of our life, based on the ministry we did, based on, um, you know, when we serve the Lord silently, not expecting any reward from people, when we, you know, donated to that charity and, and maybe did or did not tell people, the Lord's always watching. The Lord is always judging and he will reward us in heaven according to the lives we lived here on earth. So it is so vital that we put on these white garments of righteousness and clothe ourselves by that. It's so important that we are refined in our faith because that faith is more valuable than gold. And what's interesting here, it says, I solve to anoint your eyes. It just talks about how poignant it was. 
in the actual city of Laodicea, there was a eye salve that, pe- that they sold. So the people in the city would absolutely know what, um, what John is talking about here. But there's so many layers. It's like an onion because there's that literal, you know, specific, um, you know, that historical location. There's the universal, which is that like, these are truths that are um, timeless in general. And then finally, there's that prophetic, these really like these symbolic um, things that you can now just see going back, how we can see how we are now in the church of Laodicea. We are now in the church of wealth and lukewarm Christianity. And these, my friends, are some of the signs that we are in the latter of the last days. Thank you for listening to Messengers of Mercy, and I hope you have a truly blessed and Christ-filled day.